Hey, welcome to Blessed Mass. I wanted to talk a little bit about purging some items from your eBay that just never sold. So, uh, for me, what are some things that were low uh, cost items? Kind of, uh, I thought they had some value. When I first started out, I did a lot of coffee mugs, coffee cups, glassware. I guess I just kind of fell into that buy it for 59 cents, sell it for $10 or $9 or whatever. But then it became, oh, I can buy 59 cents and sell a $5 coffee mug and then put, you know, plus shipping. Well, when you start doing that and you have like a fairly heavy mug and you've wrapped it and you poly bagged it and did all of that, Somebody's paying four or five dollars, maybe even seven dollars for shipping. It's got to be a pretty special mug, you know, for five bucks. And then you're just making five dollars. So most of the things that I have, what I have done lately is I just started purging all those things that were like four, four or five or six dollars that have sat and in my store forever for you know six months they've sat there and they've not sold and I'll just kind of out of sight out of mind they're in a box in the basement and you know they're in a Rubbermaid tub and they're not hurting anything they're just it's just glassware or it's just a coffee mug that I bet bought for 59 cents and um, it's just sitting there in my eBay store sitting in my eBay store but it's really physically here so I, I I really just started thinking more and more like why do I have these items on my eBay still? I just need to purge them, <clears throat> and it felt really good to purge them because it what it did is I took about thirty items, which was a little less than ten percent of all of my store items. So I probably have about four I have about four hundred and thirty items, and I took about thirty some odd items. And just purge them. Um, took them off the list, you know, didn't relist them, took them off, deleted them off of eBay, out of my store. And But most of those I noticed were coffee mugs. And the stuff that I started off with, or the, the items that I thought was the way to go. And it turned out that's not the case at all. And I wanted to give a real big shout out to... There's a few YouTubers that uh, I watch all the time, and uh, like Alabama Pickers, I, I watch them, and um, I feel like I know, uh, you know, Dusty, you know, <laughs> so it's kind of weird whenever you watch it, because, you know, I've sat and watched videos and learned so much just from him talking into the mic, just like I'm doing now, so hopefully I can impart some wisdom to you all, like, don't waste your time with the $4 item that's going to sit for three or four months. Why are you, why even go through the effort of listing it and doing all of that, taking the seven or eight pictures of it and listing it to make four bucks when you bought it for 59 cents and someone's going to have to pay shipping and you're going to have to wrap it really, really carefully or it's going to get broken. So it's like glassware started looking like um, like I was crazy while I was doing all this glassware. So, but I know some people make a ton of money doing it. I just don't have either the patience or whatever to deal with most glassware, especially coffee mugs because they're so heavy, like fine crystal type stuff or uh, whiskey or some other glasses that are relatively lightweight. I don't have a problem with those and those push on. Um, they usually push through. But coffee mugs were doing really kind of crummy for me. Now I do I did sell some coffee mugs because they're specialty coffee mugs. Like Starbucks or that kind of stuff. Some of them do sell. And some of them are valuable. And some people will buy them because they're collectible. But most of the stuff I just bad buys so it's like I have 59 cents into this thing it, I can either take it back to Goodwill 
have a yard sale here at home and sell everything for 50 cents on the table and basically get my money back out of the thing but um, some things are just a bad buy so for me it was like coffee mugs and um, vintage puzzles and board games and stuff like that that I just could not sell and then you'll realize after you've been doing eBay for a while that <clears throat> there are some items you list it and holy cow someone's buying it I mean it's like you don't have time to even think like oh did I list that too low they just straight up buy it and um, so that makes you feel really good like oh man I, I got something of value and I listed what I wanted for it and someone purchased it so we're all good but um, yeah, purge your items off of your eBay store. If you got stuff that's super old, you know, uh, Dusty on Alabama Pickers said this, and it's so true. Like, if you got stuff that's on there so old, you need to discard that stuff and get it out of your store and start listing some stuff that's going to really sell and start focusing, start thinking and focusing not on the individual buys that you're getting, but really start strategizing about. What types of items do I want to fool with? You know, like, you know, I'm a, you know, I used to be a repair technician, and I could fix TVs and VCRs and DVDs and CDs, and I, I could do all that stereo speakers. I could, I could fix all those things. But, um, you know, those things are, like, a VCR is old. I mean, if it's 25 years old, and I'm fixing the belt in it well that's great it will probably last a little bit longer than it's whatever lifespan but it's 25 years old and it's made out of plastic and it gets hot and it's gonna break like do I want to send something off for 50 or 60 dollars to somebody to sell something and in the short term it, everything's good but you're thinking maybe it's gonna break and they're gonna return it on you within 30 days that's I started really thinking about that like I'm not going to pick up these DVD VCR combos anymore because I'm afraid someone's going to return it on me. And you have to do, you have to do test it and work on it and do all that. Or I can buy <clears throat> ephemera or a paper product or something that's more durable that's metal or whatever and never have to worry about it breaking. Or a concert t-shirt, never have to worry about it breaking. Like, you just send it and somebody's happy. So I started thinking more and more about, hey, if somebody else wants to fool with VCRs and DVD combos, let them do that. Like, I just, I had, I bought a couple and they're, they're Sony and great machines, but I did have to replace a belt in one of them and I did have to clean it up and make sure the DVD part worked and all of that. The, record part work and fully test it by the time you do all that you've spent like an hour of my time fooling with a dvd vcr combo it's going to make me 80 bucks or i could find some mid-century modern piece of art at the same and i never have to test it never have to do any of that i still have to ship it and do all that but never have to test it don't have to worry about it breaking or being broken or something so Anyway, I, I love vintage electronics. I love it for myself, for my kids. Like they love, you know, old record players and all that. That's cool. I mean, I love it, but selling it on eBay, my passion and what I like about certain things and selling it on eBay, it's just not a good mix for me. You know, if I've got some cool, you know, Kenwood cassette recorder, I might list it, <clears throat> but... Gosh, those things are old and they break and someone's going to complain because they put the tape in and it ate a tape, you know. I just, I guess that's just where I am right now with, with uh, vintage electronics. Because I used to buy lots and lots of speakers, uh, repair the foam, um, do all of that. And then it's like, oh, I got these Infinity speakers and I love them. And I just kept them for myself. Or, uh, you know, uh, different kinds of electronic Bose speakers or whatever, um, Pioneer speakers, I would just re-foam them. Uh, they, they would be bad. 
I'd buy something like four bucks for a pair. I would fix, I'd order the foams for them, which is like 10 bucks. Go in and do the adhesive, refoam them. I should probably do a video on it. Refoam everything and uh, do that. You know, I was a radio technician in the Air Force, so we did lots of speakers and microphones and all that. So it's not that big a deal for me to do that. And I enjoy doing it. But then I get the speaker and I'm like, I want to keep this for myself. <laughs> so that's usually what happens is I figure out like, oh, I'll just give this to one of my kids or uh, I'll give this to somebody or I'll sell it locally or whatever. But I don't pick up speakers anymore uh, because they're just bulky and heavy and all that. And I, I don't really want to have to fool with all that. Now, if I find um, <clears throat> an NAD receiver or something that matches something that I have, I'll buy it. Like I'm kind of slowly getting all these Kenwood products where it will look like a complete set. I'll do that uh, if I find it out in the wild, but I'm not going to go crazy and buy something for an expensive thing. Um, but anyway, that's where I am with vintage electronics and putting in selling those things. But if you're, if you like doing that, that's awesome. That's a category that you're, you like, and I'm not crazy about and um, the, but right now, it's it's uh, rare and vintage T-shirts, denim, pearl snap, you know, pearl snap buttons, uh, clothing. I do pretty well with all that. Books and DVDs, especially rare books and DVDs, uh, I do pretty well with that. And I told in the last video that you know I have about 150. Uh, list I have 150 items that I could list like you know at any time but gosh I, I would say probably I have 70 things that are really small and I could list in probably a couple of hours because they're kind of a, the identical item and I can do that so um, I'm gonna start <clears throat> I'm going on vacation and so I think the next thing that I'll do when I come back is really hit hard and heavy listing, take a Saturday and just list like mad and see if I can get my store up to 500 uh, listings, which shouldn't be that hard um, because I think I'm at 430 right now. An interesting thing too uh, for you to think about. I've just been doing this a couple of years on eBay. The first year I really wasn't all that serious. I mean, I had a store and um, I just was trying to figure it all out and I was just doing coffee mugs and books and DVDs and that's about it. Um, but there was a point when um, I was like at between 50 and 60 items and they were kind of all low, low reward items like five to ten bucks and I would have a few items that were expensive you know so when I started off that's what I started off with which is coffee mug glassware um, books and DVDs and I did okay but at some point during that uh, I, I sold a few Bibles that were really rare you know pre-1955 Bibles um, I sold a few of those for pretty good money, you know, right around the $50 mark. And um, that changed my mind about, oh, maybe I need to start looking at vintage books. So I really focused on that. And, um, but anyway, that's, for, for you, wherever you shop, that's what you have to kind of figure out, like, is this Goodwill, you'll learn this, like, this Goodwill is great for books or for vintage t-shirts or for whatever it is. And you still look at the other categories, but you're like, they don't ever have electronics or they don't ever have good art. Um, it's really weird how that works at Goodwill in particular, um, that you can find certain items and then all of a sudden, poof, they're not there anymore like no electronics no artwork 
you know, or very little artwork or really crummy artwork. Um, and so, yeah, that's one thing about Goodwills that's a little bit different, at least for me, and when I'm in a rural area, it's like the Goodwills kind of specialize in certain things. And some are just good at everything, but we really have small ones here. So we don't have like these big, big ones like we do, like we do in a larger city. Um, but anyway, that's something that you should really look at is, okay, my Goodwill, what is it really good at? And really start thinking about that, not just walking in and kind of browsing the whole thing like, okay, I'm going to hit certain categories. And this is where I'm going to say, for me, I've been doing t-shirts and I'm just going to give you some t-shirt tips. So <clears throat> if you're new to vintage or rare t-shirts, um, when I'm walking down the aisle, the, the thing that I look for are single stitch t-shirts. You can just look at the sleeve and I have another video about this, the whole thing about how to find a single stitch t-shirt. But I look for single stitch t-shirts first thing. So I walk the entire aisle of t-shirts and I'm just looking at the end of the sleeve and I'm walking down and if I find a single stitch. Now some, some, some brands are single stitch, like Polo has a lot of single stitch. There's some American Eagle that will do that. There's some Hollister that will be single stitch, but they're not real single stitch. They're just like, you know, they're made to try to look like a single stitch. Um, and they are single stitch, but they're not a vintage single stitch. So you'll walk through there and invariably you'll find the polo or whatever, but you will find Brooks, Bro you know, Brooks Brothers, or you will find, or you'll find uh, some vintage Hanes white t-shirt that's single stitch. Those go for good money. Um, so anyway, I look down the aisle and I just look at the sleeves and I'll, I'll, I can walk down it in a minute. I can walk, walk all the way down and you'll start noticing single stitches. They'll jump out at you as you're walking by. And I'm just looking at, the, I'm not flipping. I'm not doing any of that. I do that. I walk all the men's t-shirts quick. Like probably takes me five minutes just to glance at them. Then I start over again. And I start looking at only black t-shirts. And Around here, we get a lot of University of Louisville t-shirts, and the high school is black and red. So, you know, that's a barrier for me, is I have to look at a lot of those. But black t-shirts are going to be your concert t-shirts. They're going to be Harley Davidson. They're going to be, you know, there's a lot of cool factor with black t-shirts. And if you're vintage and beat up, it doesn't seem to hurt the t-shirt. So I only look at black t-shirts. I go back through men's, boom, I'm looking at black t-shirt, black t-shirt, black t-shirt. And if it's like, if it's a recognized, like I said, Harley, if it's a military type thing, um, any of that, that's what I'm looking for. Um, like, so I look for a single stitch. I can walk the whole thing. If I find a single stitch, I pull it out. And if it's not polo or some modern single stitch t-shirt, I just take that, drape it over my shoulder, and then I go back and look at all the black t-shirts. I'm looking at the black t-shirts. Invariably, I'll, while I'm looking at those black t-shirts, maybe one will, some vintage shirt might jump out at me as I'm flipping through, and I can see it. And I'll, when I'm flipping through, all I'm doing is looking at the tag in the back. So I'm swiping through, and if I see an old tag, and it's like, oh, that's a vintage t-shirt. What is that? I think the last uh, single stitch that I got was a Boy Scouts. And I'll put it on the screen, I guess. And, but I got a Boy Scouts. Uh, another uh, really cool one that I got uh, was this one for says Jungle Warfare. I think it's Jungle Warfare School. It's in Panama. So... See that? It's pretty cool, huh? But that's one that I found that I was looking just at. And what I was doing is I was looking at black t-shirts and this Gildan, uh, this Gildan uh, label popped up at me. And it's real thin. 
and see if, I mean I can tell it's just vintage shirt anyway just the feel of it feels like it's a vintage shirt it's probably 20 years old um, but that's one that I found uh, not too long ago and I was looking to see if I had my Boy Scout one in here I don't but when I'm looking at black t-shirts here's another black t-shirt that I haven't listed this guy yet but I think you, you can get this at Walmart. These uh, ramen ones. But this is one that I got because I just thought it was cool. It's a modern shirt, obviously, because it doesn't have like... But I think you can get these at Walmart. Uh, I'm not really sure. I think I've seen them there. But Walmart makes a bunch of knockoffs of, of vintage shirts, too. So that might be one. But <clears throat> that's something that would sell... It's, it's going to sell even if it's not super expensive or anything. But normally I'm looking for vintage shirts like. Here's one that I found for a couple of dollars. So, on the Street and Elvis Presley. And it's a Raglan, you know, baseball top shirt. That's one that I found. Um, but typically. That is what I'm looking for is single stitch shirts going down the aisle, boom, 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 five minutes. I mean, I can just, if I miss one, I miss one. I'm not going to spend a lot of time like going through each one unless I just have a bunch of time to kill. But normally I don't. I'm busy, <laughs> you know, so it's more important for me to list than it is for me to, to, to uh, source. Listing is where you make your money. Because you can source like crazy, but if you never list it, you never sell it. So you got to remember, you better fall in love with listing. You know, fake it till you make it. You got to fall in love with listing to make it on eBay. And if if my wife and I didn't list, we wouldn't sell anything. So anyway, th that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for single stitch t-shirts. Boom, boom, boom. Then I'm looking for black t-shirts because that's your Harley. That's your that's going to be your military type shirt. That's going to be, you know, there's cool factor shirts, you know, concert tees. That's where those are all going to be. So I look at black t-shirts. And if something else pops out at me while I'm looking for the black t-shirt and I'm just there, great. That happened. I think I got a Primus long sleeve t-shirt from like 1990 doing that. Because there was a black t-shirt right in front of it. And I flipped it, and I was flipping it, and, there was, and I was like, oh, that says Primus on the front of it. So, anyway, <clears throat> and it's like a $100 shirt. So, um, those are the kinds of things I do in the t-shirt aisle. Books, <clears throat> with books, all I'm really doing is looking at the binding and seeing if it's old. There, it, it can't be completely worn out bad. But if the binding looks old, even if the dust cover looks old, I pull it out and look at it. If I don't recognize, now I'm an English major, so I know lots of authors. If I don't recognize the author, that's okay. But I, what I do is I just look, and if it looks old, if I flip it open and I go to the, I go to the copyright page, and if it says it's before 1950, then I, I get interested. Then I might pull up my phone and look it up. If I recognize the name of the of the title or the author, that's another thing. So all I'm doing in the books is I'm just looking down the aisle and looking for something that is old. I'm not even, I might be missing something that's awesome, but I'm just looking for old stuff, right? The other thing that you want to look at is on the top shelf of most, hey, most Goodwills, is you're going to have the coffee table book. Now, there are some coffee table books that are really worth a lot of money, and some of them are just like, eh, you know. So, you know, you just have to look look for coffee table books, because those do sell as gifts. I used to, and <clears throat> I don't do this as much anymore, because I've just really started buying vintage books, you know, pre-1950 books. But I used to open every single biography and see if it was signed. I, I, I did that today because i saw one from john lewis congressman john lewis i saw his, a book of his and i thought man if this is signed this is gonna be awesome because you know he he passed away this i think this past year 
but um, and he was just a great man. I, I got to meet him once, and we got to talk, and uh, there was a person that lived in Knoxville that knew him from the, the student uh, days, his student days, and uh, we got to talk about him, and he just laughed because, you know, I knew uh, this this other civil rights leader as an old man, you know, as a man in his 60s and 70s, and he knew him as an 18-year-old. So he had different stories than uh, the stories that I had. But anyway, that that was cool to see John Lewis's book. I almost bought it anyway because it was a buck, but it had a little bit of a dog ear. If he wouldn't have had that, I would have bought it. The back side of it was dog-eared. Uh, you know, the back cover was bent, and I, I almost bought it just to buy it, just for me reading it, but I didn't. So anyway, all I'm looking for is vintage books. I'm looking at the binding. Does it look old? If it looks old, I pull it out and I look at the copyright page. If it's pre-1950, then I'm like, okay. Mm. If it's pre-1930, I'm looking it up definitely. Because a lot of those books are going to be worth something. And I have pulled books that are that old between 1930 and 1950. And some of them are signed by the author. Just... So happens they're on the shelf at Goodwill. So that has happened. So vintage books, that's all I'm looking for. I'm not really looking for anything else. Maybe a coffee table book, but they're heavy, you know, kind of a pain to ship. They're big, won't fit in a poly bag. But I look for the uh, Better Homes and Gardens cookbook. It's red and white, that gingham, you know. Uh, I look for those always. That those are a $25 bill every time you walk into a Goodwill. If you find one of those, you just buy it. Don't even worry about if it's missing pages or anything else, or if it's missing something, you just buy it anyway because you might pick one up again and it would make a whole one. So I just buy those. But I'm looking just for vintage books. So T-shirts, single stitch, black T-shirts, walk through fast. Vintage books, Walk through fast. Don't even spend much time in there. Glassware. Glassware is interesting. I buy ashtrays. Ashtrays are like the secret sauce of glassware. Because <laughs> I've sold a, I've sold an ashtray that I bought at a Goodwill for over $100. Um, and it was French. And it was porcelain. And it was just a cigar ashtray. So I have found those. I mean, I might have went for $150. I, I, I know it was a lot. That was when I was like, I'm definitely buying ashtrays. <laughs> you know, so I thought it was a fake reproduction, and it wasn't. It was in such good shape, I thought it was a reproduction. But it wasn't. It was real. And a person in Los Angeles bought it. So um, it had a hunting scene on it, or like a horse race scene a guy with a big top hat it was like from 1900 the the actual ashtray was probably before 1900 but anyway i digress glassware really the only thing that i'm really looking at is something that's going to have a quick resale like a whiskey glass um i can show you uh something along those lines like Or something that is is very like I have not listed this yet, but this is the Masters. It's just a highball glass, and it's got the Masters, and it's got all the yardages on it. I don't know if you can even see that, but it's got all the yardages and everything, par, blah blah. But that's the Masters. It looks like amoeba or something or bacteria, but it's not. This is the layout of the masters and i bought that at a goodwill 59 cents i haven't listed that i was like waiting for the masters to happen you know and then COVID hit hit and they moved the masters so i was like oh they're driving me insane with this master stuff now it's probably passed and i don't know i don't keep up with that normally it's in april so did it happen in april i don't even know and so um but i need to list that that's one thing that i need to list because that's a, kind of an expensive item um, to get because it's from the masters um, it's f from their gift shop I guess I don't know and so I looked up other ones and they were going for pretty good so 
glassware, I look for really, really specific stuff. So if it's like highball glass, mid-century modern, it's got, it's Jim Beam, Jack Daniels, uh, any kind of scotch that's on there that, like a maker's mark that has the red wax on the bottom or something, people buy those. Um, uh, they they may buy those and give them in a gift set or something. They came in a gift set, so maybe they already have two and they want two more. That's usually what happens. And I usually pick those up for 59 cents and th those are the ones that I sell on a set and I sell them for like 10 bucks or 15 bucks or 20 bucks and uh, I just push them down, down the line. I used to do a lot more glassware than I then I I used to do a lot more drinking glassware, um, but I don't do it as much because of the issues we talked about before with the coffee mugs. Like, who's going to buy this and it's going to have to be shit. Um, but if it's a collectible thing. So ashtrays, I'm always looking for ashtrays. I think they got another ashtray up there. Uh, and it's like, but I'm always looking for ashtrays. Ashtrays are really hot um, to sell. Um, and I have about three or four that are, um, cool. I mean, there's a straight up cool, um, interesting things and they're old. Um, if you can find a McDonald's ashtray, um, that's what you need to be looking for. So if you can find one in a vintage mall somewhere, you can find a McDonald's one, like the big clear amber McDonald's those are like 150 bucks so I always look for ashtrays um, especially like if they say like certain resorts or places in Las Vegas like the Sands or places that are no longer around um, then I look for those um, I don't normally get you know the local you know, the Motel 8 in Paducah, Kentucky. I don't get those. I mean, but I, I usually look for ones that are like have national appeal that you would recognize no matter where you were in the country. If it said Niagara Falls or something, or if it says McDonald's or Crystal or whatever, those are really hard to find. Um, like those glass amber ones from McDonald's are really hard to find in good shape. Um, if you come across this, but in glassware, that's what I look for is ashtrays because I have sold some for over a hundred dollars. I haven't found any vase glassware other than ashtrays that have sold as much as that. Um, I'm really searching for something else. Uh, sun tea, you know, those old sun tea glass containers that are vintage. Those, I've sold several of those. Um, pitchers, you know, glass pitchers, beer pitchers, or tea pitchers, I've sold those. Um, but they have to be really vintage, college-related, or something like that. But glassware is good. Housewares at Goodwill, it's hit or miss. You can find Paul Revere tea kettles. You can find those. You can find, um, and that's what I would be looking for, if you can find the Paul Revere tea kettles that have the copper bottom, you can clean those up, boom, you, you've got something. Um, we find Dutch ovens there. Um, and if they're an older Dutch oven, uh, they're well worth looking and seeing. If they're not all scratched up and beat up, but there's a lot of Dutch ovens that are just, uh, they're not scratched or anything, they look great. So look for Dutch ovens, even though they're heavy, you don't have to worry about them breaking. You know, you can box them and send them and make sure you have the, you know, if you got to figure in how much it's going to cost to ship something that's big. But anyway, housewares, I just look for ashtrays. I mean, I know that sounds crazy, but if you, you train yourself to be, I'm going to just look for ashtrays and you pick one up and then you decide, do I want to buy this, uh, you know, 59 cent ashtray but those mid-century modern big cigar cigarette ashtrays those big ones that are all triangle shaped yeah you can find them i mean they're out there and people don't have as much value on them so anyway uh the good 
my Goodwill, like I said, I just look for the t-shirts. There are some artwork that I look for, <clears throat> but my, my Goodwill has not been very good for the artwork lately um, that I've been able to resell. You can see behind me that I keep a lot of art, so I don't really sell a lot. There's one back behind me there that is, um, you know, it's probably a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars and I found it a Goodwill for seven ninety nine. But it's a it's a real oil oil painting and <clears throat> um, it's it's really nice. So and I didn't want to sell it. I just wanted to keep it. Um, so whenever you we're looking and trying to figure out about eBay, I know this has been a long video, but I want to kind of try to start doing some longer videos so you can kind of get my, I want to give my advice as best I can to people. And, um, you know, during COVID and people are not wanting to talk to each other as much or you're getting out there. I just want to be a voice of like, Hey, this is the kind of stuff that you can look for. Here's some tidbits about things you can look for, you know, like this, uh, mid century modern lamp that looks like it has the Eiffel tower on it. You know, it's not really, but kind of looks like that. It's got that kind of gold chevron. I got this for a dollar at a thrift store. And it's pretty awesome. It's got a wood knob on the top and everything. But I know I could sell this for 50 bucks. I know it. But I just like it. And I want to look at it. So I just kept it. You know, it's a dollar. And, and so anyway, that's something that I think everybody should... Um, be looking for is the unique item the vintage item and start looking at that if even if you're in a rural community does not mean we don't have vintage that's hanging out that's ready to be picked up at a goodwill or a thrift store or at a yard sale start looking more at vintage and uh, things that are 50 60 70 years old that are not utilitarian maybe, maybe in nature they're just more decorative type things um, and just you can find those things so um, I wanted to be able to say thank you to everybody that watches my videos we've been, been getting about I think I got 35 subscribers and um, I really appreciate all of y'all for sticking with me on uh, watching videos and everything and um, I really appreciate everything that y'all uh, uh, y'all respond back to me about things uh, I really appreciate that and um, I just want you to know that um, Jesus loves you. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. And um, there's nothing better than knowing that God is for you. He is not against you. He has brought you through so much. And all he wants is a relationship with you. He wants to have a relationship with each of his children and you are his child. You are made in God's image. And uh, so uh, think about that the next time you're standing online at Walmart or at the Dollar General or wherever. And think, that person in front of me is made in the image of God. And so am I. And it will put a smile on your face to think that God loves you. And I wanted to pray for you um, and uh, just uh, give me the, uh, just give me a moment to pray for you and then uh, uh, thank y'all. Dear Lord, thank you for everything you've given us. Thank you for this uh, blessed day and that people can listen to us and uh, they, can, they can learn from me and I can learn from them. Um, Lord, if there's anybody that's listening to this video and they don't know you, they don't know what a relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus is like, then they can always message me. They can message a friend and uh, we'll be there for them to walk them through the process of getting to know you. Dear Lord, thank you again for everything you've given us. You've brought us through so much. And if anybody is out there that needs, uh, we just want to pray for the needs of the people that are out there that are listening to this message. If there's an illness, if there's a person that's in need, that they can be touched 
by your hand. In Jesus Christ I pray. Amen. Thank you very much for listening to the video today. And um, I hope to see y'all um, after I get back off of vacation. We're going to go uh, to the beach and um, have fun. And um, uh, Lord willing, we'll be able to meet some people and talk to some folks about Jesus. And uh, that's really one of the things that I'm, you know, my wife and I are really engaged in is uh, getting to know the Lord through um, witnessing to other people. Um, thank you. God bless you. And we're praying for you here in Kentucky.